My name is Mariana Kiel. I am a senior application scientist at Roche. And today I'll talk about the single tube total nucleic acid workflow for a simultaneous analysis of DNA and RNA from FFP. When data from both genome and transcriptome are analyzed from a single sample, this enables a variety of analyses that can help us to understand the genetics of either disease and normal phenotypic variation. Information that could be missed if we analyze only the DNA or RNA from a given sample. However, most published studies do not integrate this data until the last step, until the analysis stage, after the genomic and transcriptomic data have been acquired in separate experiments, usually carried out sequentially or in parallel. But what if we could analyze a single sample containing both DNA and RNA and obtain combined sequ sequencing data? So here I will present a novel and streamlined workflow where FFP, DNA, and RNA in a single tube together can be converted to libraries simultaneously for all the steps of library preparation and target enrichment. So what are the advantages of a single tube DNA and RNA sequencing? First, it provides paired DNA and RNA profiling from the same biological sample and a deeper understanding of the tumor's behavior. The DNA can detect biomarkers such as SNVs, indels, and CNVs, and uh, RNA reads can detect fusions, exome skipping events, splicing isoforms, and gene expression levels. This uh, single tube uh, uh, to the total nucleic acid uh, workflow also conserves samples with usually limited availability, like FFP tumor samples, because the exact same tissue section uses DNA and RNA data. This workflow also um, results in shorter turnaround time and lends hands-on time when comparing to performing individual DNA and RNA library preparation, either sequentially or side-by-side -side by two technicians, for example. And in addition, the RNA-seq data could provide orthogonal verification of the DNA variant calls. So how does this workflow work? The idea is to have the DNA and RNA in the same tube to be used as input into this workflow that combines the steps from the Kappa DNA and RNA library prep kits. This makes it possible to get much more information from each, side, uh, each slice of the available tumor sample. First, the DNA and RNA are fragmented to proper sizes. DNA fragmentation is performed using an enzyme mix that's, uh, that was developed to generate low sequencing artifact rate, and the RNA is fragmented based on heat. Then the RNA is converted to cDNA, and a tag is added to specifically mark the molecules derived from RNA, allowing the discrimination of the DNA and RNA reads in the sequencing data. Then the double-stranded um, fragments uh, that were originated from DNA and RNA uh, are ligated to kappa universal adapters containing UMIs or mole unique molecular identifiers. This way, a unique barcode is incorporated into each fragment from DNA and RNA, and true variant variants present in the original sample can be distinguished from errors introduced during the library preparation, enabling the detection of somatic mutations with greater accuracy. These ligated products are then amplified with kappa UDI primers, which add the M sample indexes. Both DNA and RNA libraries from a given sample receive the same indexes, ensuring that the reads will be tracked back to the same initial sample. And then, target enrichment is performed to simultaneously capture regions of interest from both DNA and RNA together. Simultaneous DNA and RNA pre-capture libraries can then be completed in less than five hours, and from fragmentation to post-amplification uh, post beads cleanup. Library QC and target enrichment setup can be performed on day one for the hybridization to happen overnight. And on the day two, capture libraries are washed and amplified, and this takes around three hours. So overall, it takes only one and a half days to generate sequencing ready target richer libraries from a sample containing both DNA and RNA as initial input. So next, the enriched libraries are sequenced on a illuminating instrument and the raw reads are demultiplexed. 
then uh, reads with the same UMIs are grouped together and consensus are unique reads are generated, filtering out PCR, PCR errors and duplicate reads. Then the RNA tags are detected and the reads containing the tag are classified as RNA reads and they go through the RNA-seq analysis. And the reads without the tag are classified as DNA reads and they go through a DNA-seq analysis. Next, I will present some data using this single tube total nucleic acid workflow using four different input samples, including um, FFPE with high quality and compromised quality. Also from FFPE samples containing uh, known SNVs and indels, and FFPE sample with known RNA fusions. For the first two samples, high quality and compromised FFPE, Total nucleic acid were used as input into this single tube total nucleic acid workflow uh, and enriched with the Kappa Hypercap Oncology panel, which covers around 214 kilobases, and then uh, assessed for the DNA and RNA sequencing performance. For the next sample, the allele frequency of several SNVs and indels were compared following both the single tube workflow and a standard DNA library preparation, followed as well for, by target enrichment with the Oncology panel. And the detection of um, 18 known RNA fusions were analyzed with uh, this single tube workflow, also followed by target enrichment with the oncology panel. So I will start with data from FFP samples with variable quality. Here we have some key sequencing metrics of the DNA reads. The mean coverage of both high quality and compromised FFP was similar in above uh, 1000x. The on target rate was above 86% for both sample types, which is expected for this panel. And the fold 80 base penalty, which represents coverage with uniformity, was similar between samples as well. For the RNA-seq analysis, the mean coverage of the compromised sample was higher than the, um, the high quality one. And while this might seem counterintuitive, this compromised sample uh, containing a higher proportion of RNA to DNA um, than the high quality one. And the initial input mass into this workflow is calculated based on the DNA concentration. So um, since the relative amount of RNA uh, varies between samples, this impacts the coverage of the RNA reads. The target rate of the RNA reads was also very high for both samples. And no ribosomal RNA was detected in either sample, demonstrating that upfront ribosomal depletion is not necessary in this workflow. So now let's take a look in the data from samples obtained with, uh, that contain SNVs and indels. The allele frequency of 12 SNVs and indels were overall concordant between the single tube total nucleic acid workflow shown on the y-axis and the standard DNA library preparation on the x-axis, demonstrating that the robustness of this single tube total nucleic acid workflow on detecting variants at as low as the 3% frequency. So what about the, the variant detection on the RNA reads? How this data compares to the DNA data? So we analyzed um, SNVs in an FFPE sample with known expected uh, allele frequencies and the observed frequencies were not only concordant with the expected one shown here in gray, but they were also consistent between DNA reads in, gray, in green and uh, RNA reads in blue. Analyzing variants in the RNA level is important because they represent the expressed variants and they are more likely to be associated with biological effects. And finally, regarding RNA fusions, the FFP standard uh, sample used in this analysis contains 16 gene fusions and two exon skipping events. 15 out of the 16 fusions, or 93.8% of them, were detected, and 100% of the exon skipping uh, alterations were also detected with this single tube total nucleic acid workflow. So, in summary, this single tube total, total nucleic acid workflow simultaneously generate DNA and RNA libraries from a, single um, from a single input sample, and the reads from DNA and RNA can be discriminated. It yields similar sequencing metrics from FFP input with high quality or low quality, 
It also provides accurate concordant identification of SNVs and indels from RNA and DNA. It detects RNA fusion and exon skipping events with confidence, enabling a comprehensive and paired profiling of biomarkers in a reduced turnaround time. So I'd like to thank the teams uh, in Wilmington, Massachusetts, and Cape, uh, Cape Town in South Africa that contributed to the development of this workflow. And here's the, the contact of our support team and my own email. And please come visit us in our booth 319. I'll be super happy to discuss further this workflow with you. Thank you.